Fanny Mina Tenorio is a local leader in coastal Ecuador. To her, the restoration of the mangrove forests along the coast is essential. As she told Bill Johnson, a professor who accompanied the Whitewater students to Bolivar, the manglares, as the mangroves are called in Spanish, are essential because they sustain life. Es muy importante porque es una fuente de vida. Es una fuente de vida para todos nosotros y sobre todo sirve como barrera protectora de los fenómenos naturales. Y también sirve para evitar la salinización de los bosques húmedos tropicales. Por eso es importante. Y por otra parte también es importante porque de ahí se extraen todos los recursos naturales que se desarrollan, se multiplican en ese ecosistema y es fuente de, de trabajo, de ahí se, se extrae los recursos para la venta y para la alimentación, por todas esas cosas, porque sirven para la educación de nuestros hijos, ya que en nuestro medio no hay industrias, no hay fábricas, no hay microempresas, entonces es la gente más marginada que vive de este sector y es la única fuente que tenemos, por eso es importante el ecosistema manglar. But how does a foreign volunteer from Wisconsin suggest to rural Ecuadorians that they should get together and take action to improve their lives? It's a challenge, but meeting that challenge is central to what the Peace Corps does. The local representative of the Esmeraldas provincial government, Hugo Mera Gonzalez, admitted to Bill Johnson that the local folks were a little intimidated by Jeannie at first, but she soon won them over. Oh, hasta que ya llegamos el momento que hemos comido juntos sí. en su casa, hemos hecho mingas, hemos ido a, a, lo, a los trabajos, ella adelante con nosotros y como le digo, deja mucho recuerdo y para nosotros lo más bonito que hemos tenido en nuestro pueblo es a la doctora Gini en buscar la transformación, la forma de cómo que debemos vivir con civilización y cómo es que debemos de buscar la mejora a beneficio de nuestras comunidades. Maybe one clue to Jeannie's success is that her early life growing up on a small Wisconsin dairy farm near Darlington wasn't so different in some ways from rural Ecuador today. Another member of the cross-cultural communication class at UW-Whitewater, Mike Dietrichs, visited the farm and talked with Diana Pattinson, Jeannie's sister. According to her, life on the farm in the 1940s and 50s wasn't easy. Uh, well, we had a regular pump that we'd have to hand pump the water and bring that into the house. Um, I do remember when we got electricity. I was in grade school then, and I remember coming home and we, Mama had gotten an iron and she had an iron plugged in to iron clothes and she had made three shirts that day and she was ironing them. She did all the sewing, all our clothes. She sewed all our clothes for us. The house itself was very small. There was one little bedroom downstairs, which was my mom's. There was a, a small living room and a, a kitchen. And upstairs was two bedrooms. One was a boy's bedroom and one was the girl's bedroom. That was it. I can remember five of us in each room. When Sheila and Hori, the two youngest ones, they got to go through high school with indoor plumbing. They're the, we always call them the brats because they got the indoor plumbing. <laughs> Jeannie's father worked in the Chicago meat packing plants. So like the kids in Bolivar, whose fathers worked away from home most of the time, Jeannie's dad wasn't home much either. Jeannie's mother ran the farm and raised 11 children pretty much by herself. He worked in Chicago and as a butcher and never, I mean, he'd come home on weekends once in a while, not a lot, but obviously quite a bit. <laughs> but I mean, my, months might go by that he'd never get home. So that was my mom that was really in charge of raising all the kids and taking care of everything. But as similar to Jeannie's rural background might be to some aspects of life in Bolivar, Jeannie believes that culture matters, and everyone is a product of his or her unique life experiences. 
I think that uh, if I'm, you know, a, a mistake I probably made early on in Columbia was that um, I was looking for similarities. I wasn't looking for differences. And I think uh, sometimes when you look too hard for similarities, um, you, you gloss over the differences, which do matter, which do matter. And I really question um, myself after even being here as long as I have that uh, I really... I really don't know if it's possible to sort of get inside the head of another culture, no matter how well you speak the language, no matter how. I just think it does matter. I think that we are such a product of our own experience and, and our, our own culture is, has such a powerful influence on us, whoever, wherever we grow up in the world, that it's... Um, so what, ha what happens is you've got to try to really be patient and try instead of you know, be non-judgmental if you can do that, because we are all products of our environment and what what influenced us growing up and living in wherever we are. And so I think coming to to and I think that I think that age does help in kind of accepting, being accepting, not approving <laughs> necessarily, but accepting that this is the way things are here, or this is. This is how people feel, it's what they believe, or it's, it's what's important to them. For instance, I think that, um, you know, I'm amazed at how much money gets spent on their annual fiesta. And you and I might think, well, maybe they should spend the money on books for the kids, or shoes for the kids, or da-da-da-da-da. But I know that this culture really highly values that that celebration every year and they all look forward to it. It's when everybody comes home, the kids come home from the city, the people who've moved away bring their families home. It's, uh, it's not just the fiesta, it's, it's a homecoming. And so it's important, just like our homecomings or our Christmas or our other Thanksgiving or other celebrations that we have. So, you know, I think you, you just have to be really careful about uh, equating because differences are good too. And, um, and they're just differences. doesn't mean they're better, worse. We're better, worse. And so I think that that's um, a lesson that anybody who's going to be effective in working in another culture, you know, has to kind of come to terms with. Peace Corps volunteers live in the communities where they're assigned. That way, each volunteer commits to the community and helps it to find its own collective voice. Fanny Tenorio sees Jeannie's ability to organize as one of her strongest values to Bolivar. Que está permanente y está motivando a la gente para que reclame sus derechos, para que se organice, para que pidamos, exijamos lo que nos hace falta. Entonces sí es importante. The key to development is getting the community leaders themselves to set goals and decide on their own priorities. It isn't enough to impose priorities from the outside. I have to explain to you a little bit about my philosophy of development, and it is that um, you can't come into a community and just say, oh, wouldn't X, Y, Z be great, and let's do it, and I'll get the money, and I'll write, to, write home and establish something. Because I think then uh, we talk a lot about buy-in in the States. I think the people have to be the ones who develop the ideas, and then you can help them accomplish it. So actually, um, a couple of the leadership came to me in the community and, and said, you know, we realize that we, we don't have a plan for, you know, what do we do first, how do we do it, who's going to work on it, who's going to work on what project. So, and we know you know how to do planning, so can you teach us? And so, um, and so we did a two-day uh, strategic planning session with all of the community leaders. That meant uh, all the political leaders, the government leaders, the uh, leaders of each organization. And we actually formed a committee of that leadership. And so it's called the, the Community Development Committee. And so what we do is identify community resources, um, what are the needs, and then what are the priorities. And then we set up committees and who's going who's gonna to do the work. Um, so that, that committee is working very effectively, I think. And then the second a group is um, a group of young people, a youth group of people in their late teens and early 20s who, number one, are very enthusiastic, they have a lot of energy, and they're interested in making their community a better place.
So those two things, I think.